Uh, Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight acknowledging that you are the God who is always first in fellowship. Where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in your midst. And so we know that Lord, you are here. You are here in all of your glory, in all of your power to show yourself strong in our midst this night. We give thanks to you for these three years, three years of a new beginning, and yet it is by the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done already these three years through this ministry. And as we look forward to more of what you will do through this ministry, we say thank you and submit to you the God who is in the midst of his people by your promise. And so we acknowledge that you are here and you are here to bless us with your very presence, to bless us with your word, to bless us with grace and mercy, to manfully move on much through this land by your spirit because that is what you've called us to be. So we thank you, Lord. May your word go forth, Lord, and bless us with the soundness of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 The song that the worship group just sang, we are only here because you made the way. Mm -hmm. This ministry has been around for three years because God in His grace has allowed this ministry to be birthed and also to do the work of ministry to which God in His grace has called it to be. You could never ask for um, a man of God to lead this church than a man who supports Liverpool. <laughs> oh, you could do better than that. <laughs> Amen. And I also support Liverpool, so I know I'm in good company. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, I'm here uh, by the invitation of Pastor Darren, and I can say that I am grateful for the invitation, and I'm here also with my uh, sweetheart, uh, Eunice. <laughs> so it's, it's a joy in sharing with you today on your anniversary. I asked Pastor Darren what the theme of your anniversary is. I said, just come in and, and, and share with us. So after much praying, I believe this is what the Lord wants me to share with you. And it is the title, uh, Walk in this land by my spirit. The thought is from this song, from building a people of power and I'm making a people of praise who march through this land by my spirit and to glorify my precious name. Build your church, Lord. Make us one, Lord. Join our hearts to your son. Make us one, Lord, in your body. And it goes on. And first of all, before we explore together what this theme is, I want us to consider something of a truth as far as we are concerned. And that is our birthright. I'm not a Baptist by conviction, I'm a Methodist by conviction, but a Baptist by ministry. Amen. Uh, my wife and I uh, are Methodists. Each time we go back to Ghana, we find ourselves at ease in the Methodist church. But hey, uh, if, as far as ministry is concerned, this is where we are and this is where we've made our home in the Baptist family. And so I'm a Baptist minister. Whatever your, your, your conviction is as far as a Christian is concerned in terms of denomination or which uh, a church you choose to align yourself with, you are a child of God. Amen. Amen. Now, what in scripture or what in scripture are we told specifically of what has become of us as God's people? And uh, I have three foundational scriptures 
uh, which we will reflect on. And the first one is in Romans chapter 16, verses uh, 16, sorry, Romans chapter 8, verses 16 to 17. Romans chapter 8, uh, from verse 16 to 17. Pastor Darren tells me that you do read your scriptures a lot. Amen. So it's there. It's there. Hallelujah. It says, the Spirit is a birth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then we are heads. We are joined heads with Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. We, we are God's people. The Spirit of God Himself bears witness. So there is no way of uh, doubting who you are as far as the child of God is. You are a child of God. You don't have to because it is right here that the Spirit of God, He who is at work in you to will and to do of God's good pleasure, uh, 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 affirms to you, tells you, and joins himself with your spirit to let you know that you are a child of God. And if you are a child of God, then you are here with Jesus Christ, a poor her with Jesus Christ. So first, let's try to unpack this a little bit. So if we are talking about birth right, as far as our relationship with Christ is concerned, then scripture is telling us as clear as daylight that we are God's children. And if we are God's children, we have every right to enjoy whatever God has set up in Christ Jesus with us. You see folks, everything that we enjoy, everything that we hope to be, everything that we are, we are it's all in union with Christ. Amen. There is nothing that we are or we hope to be that is apart from Christ. All that we are and all that we hope to be, all that we hope to accomplish through this ministry in our personal life by the grace of God, it's all in union with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So if we are God's people, then we are the body of Christ, isn't it? If we are God's people, then we are the church of the living God. Amen. Amen. If we are God's people, then we are the church of God. So there is no distinction. There is no way we should allow denominations to play a part or pull us apart. We are God's people. We are the body of Christ. We are the church of the living God. And so if Jesus says, I am building or I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against this. Folks, this is what Christ means. Wherever we've come from, whatever we've made or wherever we've made our home, we are the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. I don't see you any differently and you didn't see me any differently. I remember I was invited to a place to preach and uh, I sat, I was, my wife and I were part of the service. It went on until I got up to speak. And I believe I spoke what the Lord laid on my heart to share. Afterwards, the pastor came to me. He said, Pastor, well, I didn't know Baptist people could go deep like that. He said, where you are, shouldn't be telling or put you on a higher uh, pedestal than your other brother in a different church. Amen. We all are the body of Christ. We are the church of the living God. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus Christ has joined us unto himself. Amen. And so if we are here, what does that mean? And listen to this definition. A person legally entitled to the property or rank of another on that person's death. That's first definition of what an heir is. Number two, a person who inherits and continues the work of the predecessor. And this much more really define who we are as heirs of Jesus Christ. He said we've not been saved 
to sit down as uh, my brother uh, made that uh, analogy. If you sit too much, the seat of your skirt or your dress or your trousers will tear, will wear out. Amen. Amen. Brother, let us learn to go on our knees and in prayer. Hallelujah. Do the work of God. Amen. So we have been saved and we have inherited something from God co-heard with Jesus Christ and we are to continue the work of our predecessor. Who is our predecessor? Jesus. We are co-heirs with him. And so folks, we have been saved to do the work of ministry. Amen. Amen. And I thank God that you are in your own way doing the work of ministry. But I submit to you folks, all of us, we have something to do in the kingdom of God. The simple, simple statement like, Jesus loves you. Passing that on to someone who isn't a Christian is a message. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we get things confused. We think we have to make people get saved. It is, it is the work of the Spirit of God who convicts people. Amen. Amen. It is mine to share the testimony of what God has done for me and to, and to, and to testify to the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it is the, the work of the Holy Spirit to bring men and women hope. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. So the first uh, point I want to submit to you is the fact that we are God's people. So we have this birth right of being heirs of Jesus Christ our Lord. And by definition, a person who inherits and then continues the work of the predecessor. So folks, we've got something to do. We've got a gospel to share. The gospel is good news. Amen. The gospel has capacity to save. The gospel has power. Paul says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to anyone who believes. Amen. Then share the gospel. Amen. And folks, can I encourage you to, to, to learn scripture? Commit scripture to memory. I came to Christian faith at the age of 16. I'm almost 60 years. I'm 60 this year in November. But when I gave my life to Christ, I made it my point to learn scripture. I mean, I, I read the Bible cover to cover. Amen. Amen. And, and, and I, I, I enrolled in, in some Bible, uh, uh, on Bible, some Bible courses, courses from America. And folks, I just, I just change scripture. And I tell you, the scriptures I'm able to quote offhand were scriptures I learned at the age of 16, 17, 18. And I'm still doing it. And folks, I know you can do it. Amen. Amen. Now the second foundational scripture I will share with you is from Ephesians chapter 3 from verses 10. And this is the actual walking the land by my spirit. Right, it's on the spirit. So let's read together. To the intent that now, to, let's read together. I love that. To, 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 to the intent that now, unto the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, I know, I get known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Verse 11. According to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, and verse 12, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith of him. Amen. By the intent that the manifold wisdom of God may be known to principalities. Isn't that God so so gracious that you and I with all our faults with all our weaknesses with all our shortcomings as the church the body of Christ the church of the living God God in his mercy in his grace and in the economy of the Godhead has given this privilege to us the church 
that we should be, we should make known the manifold wisdom of God to principalities. Amen. Amen. What a privilege. It's a privilege. So there are many facets of God's wisdom. For example, why should God save you? Why should God save me? Why is God on the move redeeming at such a measureless cost? Today, anyone who comes to Christ, Christ will say no to that person. The valid sinner who truly believes that moment from Jesus, a pardon receives. Amen. Isn't that the wisdom of God? As far as our salvation is concerned, it's the wisdom of God that God should use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Is that not wisdom? Yes. It's wisdom. Isn't it amazing that God should use you, this ministry, to bring and to make known the wonderful riches of God's grace? To the world. That is the wisdom of God. And then and, and Peter in, in his letter talks about the angels so so confounded by this act of God's grace. And, and, they, and they search and they look to see and, and to and to and to participate in this in this wisdom of God that grace should save you and me. That the blood of Jesus Christ would save you and me to save the world. Hallelujah. What can wash my sins away? Nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It's the wisdom of God. This mystery all that the immortal should die. It's a mystery. But that's the wisdom of God. And we have been called upon to march through this land and to declare the, 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 the manifold wisdom of God as far as salvation and deliverance is concerned. Wow! Wow! You and I have been called to participate in this ministry. And you see, folks, the angels of God are, 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 are involved in this. The principalities, the good angels, the bad angels, the wicked angels, the good angels, they are all watching on. But it's the good angels, even though they are perplexed, they are part of this ministry of reconciliation. Hallelujah. In Hebrews 1 and verse 14, the Bible talks about the fact that the angels of God, hallelujah, they are ministry spirits sent to minister unto us. The good news says that they are ministry spirits sent to bring help to those who will inherit salvation. Isn't the wisdom of God that at the command of Jesus Christ, these angels which the Bible describes them as ministering spirits, come to bring help to God's people, to the church of the living God, to the intent, the intent that is God's intention that the ministry of reconciliation should be delivered by the church of the living God, making it known even to the principalities that there's something going on. Glory. Ray, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, Hallelujah. Amen. He will not stop 
until his full purpose or purposes have been achieved. Hallelujah. And in Luke 15, this is Jesus speaking. Hallelujah. And he says, there is great joy in heaven in the presence of the angels. There is great joy in heaven. When one sinner comes to repentance. So at the end of 61 summer day when I gave my life to Christ in Ghana, I made headlines in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. And you made headlines in heaven when you got saved. And the angels of God are waiting for more headlines. In other words, for more people to come to Christian faith. And God in his wisdom is willing to use you and me to do that work. Hallelujah. Amen. So if we are to walk this line, knowing our birthright, then how are we to do the work of ministry? And I submit to you that we need weapons. Hallelujah. Amen. We need weapons. And Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 gives us a very good profile of what the Word of God is. It's for the Word of God is active and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Hallelujah. It pierces through to the divine assembly of soul and spirit. Amen. To the very intent of the heart. Dividing the soul and the spirit. Isn't that amazing that it's only the Word of God that can sever divide where the soul and the spirit meet. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. That's only his word. Who can say that? And 2 Corinthians 10 4 to 6 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strong holds. The first weapon we need is the Word of God. And the Word of God is active. <laughs> it's not dormant. It's active. And it is sharper than any two edged sword. It has the ability, the capacity to go with precision. Hallelujah. God knows what He's doing. So if God delivers a word, he does so with the intent to bring his way and purpose to pass. Psalm 119 and verse 9, it says, How can a young man or a young woman keep his way away pure except by taking heed to the word of God? Amen. So if we are to march through the land by the Spirit of God, we need the weapon. The first weapon I submit to you is the word. And that word is accurate. It is sharper. It has precision. Amen. Amen. And it is not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to pull in down strongholds, sorting out arguments, putting people in place. And if we are to keep our, our, our walk our right with God, the Word of God is there to help us. Amen. Amen. And in, in verse 130, it says, The entrance of the Word gives light. In other words, the going forth and then into of God's word in any person's life has the ability to bring illumination, to lighten, to bring sense, to change direction, to make sure things are right. The second weapon we made, I submit to you, my dear friends, is prayer. Prayer simply is talking to God, isn't it? Yes. Prayer is talking to God. Now we have Jesus' example to follow. In Mark 1.35, the Bible talks about Jesus Christ rising 
very early in the morning and he separated himself from his disciples, goes to a solitary place and there the Bible says that Jesus prayed, he sought the face of God. Then folks, if Jesus had the wisdom and the understanding of the need of prayer and he set time to pray, don't you think that we want to do the same? Yes. We want to do the same. Yes. We want to. You see, we, we, if prayer does not underpin ministry, ministry will fall flat. It will. And folks, there are promises, promises, promises <coughs> leading to prayer. I guess we all know what Jeremiah 29 11 says. Without, without referring, we know. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans of good and of evil. They are plans to give you a what? A future and a hope. That's all we know. But if you go step up, verse 12, he says, Then you will come to me, hallelujah. Then you will call upon me, and I will listen to you. Amen. This is an all-time invitation from God to come to him. So look, as far as my will and grace and mercy to meet your needs, I want you to do something more. That meeting your needs, it's my concern. But I want you to come and fellowship with me through prayer. Come. Come, let's talk. Come and seek strength from God. What your needs are, are right before God. But he says, then you will come to me. That is bunker. There are some folks in Ghana, they think they know, they can see through what the national lottery numbers will be every week. <laughs> and, and, and they are there all over in Accra. And people go, surround them, and pay money to get numbers. And they have some they call banker. Whatever you do, that number is coming, they will tell you. As far as God meeting your need is banker, God will do it. But he says, come on, I want, I want you. I want you for myself. You know when God says to his people, within the text of the Ten Commandments, he says, for I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God. God wants you, just you for himself. God doesn't want to share you with anybody. God says, I am a jealous God. You should have no other God before me. Don't bow down to them. Don't worship them. Come to me. I want you for myself. Amen. Amen. And in Psalm 65 and verse 5, this is what the psalmist says by the Spirit of God. By awesome deeds in righteousness, I will answer you. Isn't that amazing? By awesome deeds in righteousness, I will answer you. Awesome deeds. In other words, what God is going to do, when it happens, it will tingle in the ears of people. Wow. Did God do this for you? Yes, he did. Did God move on your behalf? Yes, he did. Did God provide his Yes, he did. Because he says, by awesome deeds in righteousness. Awesome deeds. Folks, when you pray, pray that God will repeat these works of, of, of power in your life. As a church, we pray in that prayer. God, do it again. As you did in Bible times. In our day, in our time, God, do it again. And God wants to hear self challenge coming from the lips of his people. Yes. For far too long we've been quiet. In Isaiah 65, 24, God says to the prophet Isaiah, This shall come to pass that before you call, I have answered. Wow, is it true? Yes. Before you open your mouth to call upon me, God says, I have answered. Is this not enough motivation for you folks to go on your knees and call upon the name of the Lord? 
I believe it is. And it shall come to pass. And before you open your mouth to say or to ask God, He says, It's done. And while you continue to speak, He says, I will listen. And the last promise, there are many, and I will share this all with you in Matthew 18 and verse uh, uh, 18 to 20. Again, we see God partnering with us. Again, I say unto you that if two shall agree as touching anything here on earth and they would ask, it shall be done by my Father who is in heaven. This is Jesus speaking, folks. If two shall agree, he said God in his wisdom brings the, 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 the agreement to the two. Amen. If two shall agree, as touching anything here on earth, and they would ask, shall be done by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered, that's why I said, and I always believe that Jesus is always first in fellowship. Where two or three are gathered in my name, not I will be, is that what he says in the Bible? Where two or three are gathered in my name, what? There I am. So he's always first in fellowship before we gather, he's there. Before, you know, this meeting started, Jesus has been here. When he was sitting or uh, moving around the back, according to scripture, he's here. For me, that is enough. Hallelujah. Now the third uh, 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 weapon that we need is fellowship. Hebrews 10, 24, 25. It speaks of God calling his people together. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Provoke is a very strong word used. Now if someone provokes you to anger, then the person really moves on to touch your buttons. Amen. And, and, and so strong enough to, to get a kick from you, get a reaction from you. Now in the same way, that, that word used there is to really go deep in you and to cause a reaction. So, so God is saying, let, let, one, let, us, let us provoke one another, not to fight, but what? To love. Let us do that. And then what? Good works. You see, we've been saved to do good works. If it's just to win a life, by grace, you have been saved through faith. And it is not of your own doing. It's not. But it's we have been saved unto good works. And so let us provoke one another. Let us push one another. Now when we came here, these brother and sister, they kept just pushing one another. <laughs> just pushing one another. Provoking one another. Provoking one another. That's wrong provoking. <laughs> the provoking I'm talking about is the one that helps you to love, amen, and to do good works. Amen. Whose children are they? They're not here, okay. But I tell you, they will push you one another. Hello? Uh, <laughs> right Give me a high five in the air. Woo! Classic. The thing, folks, I share with you today is about fellowship. I, the dynamics of fellowship. 25 says, let us, let us not forsake the assembly, the coming together of ourselves as the manner of some things. But rather, we gather. And in the gathering, what do we do? We encourage one another. Proverbs says, iron sharpens iron. If you've ever been to the butchers, huh? They, they, they take a knife and a fire and kick it, kick it, kick it, kick it. And one deep, it goes so deep, amen. amen. Because one iron has sharpened the other. Amen. And that's what it is, folks. Let us learn to encourage one another, to provoke one another in a good way. Hallelujah. Amen. And in, in Colossians chapter 3, uh, verses 12 to 13, there's a beauty there. Again, it says, put, put on therefore as the elect, as God's people, 
chosen by God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies and of kindness and humbleness of mind, meekness and long suffering. So these are qualities that every child of God should have. And as we meet together, you see, I'm receiving such kindness from you. And you are receiving kindness from me. And, 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 and I'm giving you the humbleness of, of mind and of spirit. And, and so we will just spread it. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And as they say, spread the love. <laughs> so spread the love and the kindness. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And then verse 30 says, forbearing one another. In other words, folks, then there are some. Maybe you did this ministry, you are full of angels, so you would never experience that. But I tell you, there are some Christian brothers and sisters, they can really step on your toes and provoke you. They can't do that. But let us learn to bear with them. Amen. Amen. There are some, they will open their mouth and say, wow, what is this? You don't want to even hear that. But they are, they've been saved by grace, amen. So let, let, let's learn to, to, to deal with them, amen. Let's, let's learn to bear with them. Bear with one another and forgiving one another. If any man or woman have quarreled against any, even as Christ forgave us, so you do the same. Spread the love, spread the kindness of God, spread the forgiveness of God. Because you see, freely you have, been, you have received, freely gave. Amen. Amen. And then again in um, Second, uh, first, first Thessalonians 5 and verse 4, it says, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that they should overtake you as a thief. It, it talks about being on your guard, isn't it? You are on your guard that you are never taken by surprise. And Galatians 6 and verse 2, again, these are dynamics that we should share in the church. It says, be you, sorry, bear you one another's burden, and so fulfill the love of God, of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us learn to come alongside one another. Amen. Amen. And, and as, you, as you are planning to begin to to, to, to express uh, uh, as a body of Christ on a weekly basis, you're thinking about that, you, you will begin to know at the moment it's much online, isn't it? Okay. But when you start meeting on a regular basis and you see each other's face more often, then your real angelic being will show. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Then you will know and learn how to bear one another's burden. Mm -hmm. Because you see, we are different and we represent different needs. Mm -hmm. But we are there to bear one another's burden. And the last of the dynamics of fellowship is Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 17, which I have shared already. Iron, that's what sharpens iron. Folks, we have been called to march through this land by the Spirit of God. Zechariah uh, chapter 6, verse 4. For it is not by might, not by power, but it is by my Spirit, says the Lord. Folks, we can't do this without the Spirit of God. So let us rely heavily on Him. We have been called that through us, with all our imperfection, the manifold wisdom of God, made known to principalities and powers. And so we need to be on our guard and enjoy much of fellowship with one another because Christ is always first in fellowship. And let us hold on onto the weapon of the word of God because that power to set people free and to put us on the right path as we walk through the land. Amen. Amen. Amen.